Okay, let's talk about word problems. Now, one of the things that I've been noticing that you're struggling with, this is very common, is people are forgetting to define the variable. That is our first step. So you want to start with what is the unknown. Step two, set up an equation. In this case, it will be an inequality. Solve the inequality and answer the question in a complete sentence. What would you say the fifth thing, this is number three, this is number four, and what do you say the fifth step is? You all are very good at checking. Let's put it in bold, check. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna rush through this problem, meaning we're gonna read it, underline it, solve it, and hunt for mistakes. You see that? That's the acronym RUSH. You're gonna rush through the problem. I hope you remember, it's a little acronym. Okay, Sarah's financial aid states her tuition may not exceed $1,345 per term. If the college charges a non-refundable $25 fee and 79 per credit hour, what is the greatest number of credit hours she can register for? The greatest number, the greatest number, can she go over that if it's the greatest? No, she has to stay below it. So what's the greatest number? Where, what is the first step? Define the variable. What variable do you want to use? Sure, X and what should it represent? Represents, it actually is gonna represent the question. What is the greatest number of credit hours? Represents the number of credit hours. Here's the thing, your variable is not gonna represent I mean, it represents a number, but it represents a number that you don't yet know. So you wouldn't say like X represents $79, right? Because you already know that. So a whole point of our variable is to say, well, what is the thing that we're, your variable is gonna answer the question. Okay, number two, set up an inequality. Okay, so right here, 25 plus 79 per credit. That's how much money she has to pay, right? $25, that's non-refundable, plus 79 for every credit she takes. Right there, that represents her tuition. This whole side is her tuition. That, that's the amount she's going to owe. Do you want that tuition to be greater than, equal to, or less than the amount of money that she has for her aid you want it to be yes it could it can't exceed right so it has to be less than or equal to so this is since this is her tuition here we want it to be less than or equal to does that make sense how we wrote the inequality it's a little bit different than exactly an equation you don't want it to exceed so you want the tuition to be less than any questions about that setup that's the hardest part right there once you set it up you're good to go Right? How do you solve this after you've set it up? Yeah, minus 25 from both sides. We get 79x is less than or equal to 1320. Is that right? Did I do my math correctly? Okay, and then what should I do from here? Divide. Should I flip the inequality or not? Why not? We didn't divide by a negative, excellent. So we keep the inequality the same. And now I don't know my 79 times tables. Okay, 1320 divided by 79, I trust you, 16.7, 16.7. Usually you can't take 0.7 credits. So how many credits can she take? Yeah, but if she actually took 17, wouldn't she exceed? We want this to be less than. So if we graph it, here's zero here, here's 16.7. Okay, so probably in reality, you know, she can take less than 16.7 credits. 
Exactly. We wouldn't really want a round in this case because then she'll go over her tuition and then that money's got to come out of her own pocket. Tuition's not going to pay for it. Okay. So probably she can take less than 16 credits. We already talked about how to do the check. I'm not going to go through that just to save a little bit of time because we're almost out of time here. Let's do this next one. This question is one of the most famous questions that I get asked all the time. And once we do it, you will be able to figure this out for yourself. Joe's grade in math is based on 300 point exams and one 200 point final. Oh my gosh, no homework. What? So how many points does he get in his math class altogether? How many points would that be? Yeah, 500 points total points. He must earn 80% of the total points to receive a B. Currently, his test scores are 71, 83, and 78. What must he earn on the 200 point final to receive at least a B in the course. So remember, we're not setting anything up yet. We're gonna write a variable that will answer that question. So our variable, if you wanna use X, what does X represent? His score on the final, right? Okay, so so far, Let's write, now we can write the inequality. So he wants at least a B. So his grade right now is 71 plus 83 plus 78 plus his final. Does this grade, should it be greater than, this is his grade. Once he gets this final, this is how many points he will have. Should this grade be greater than or less than a B. You want it to be greater than, greater than or equal to, because this is right here, this is all of his grade, and we want it to be greater than or equal to 80%, which is 0.8 times the 500. How many points does he need, right? So that's writing the inequality. His grade should be greater than 80% of 500. Any questions on that setup? Okay, let's solve it. Step three, solve it. Okay, I'm gonna use the calculator because why not? 71 plus 83 plus 78. So, so far he has 232 points and there's his final greater than or equal to 80% of 500. Does everybody understand why I'm doing 80% of 500? Okay, now what should we do to get X by itself? Right, subtract, right? So I'm gonna subtract. Notice how my calculator, if I do subtract, it does ANS, it's taking the last answer, minus 232. X is greater than or equal to 168. So he has to get over 168. You guys could do this exact same calculation if you wanna know what you need to get on the final once you get closer to there. And 168 divided by 200 is an 84%. So he needs 84% or higher on his final. And again, I'll let you graph and check it. Any questions before I push stop?